so this is another super charge you know <laughs> so when, when first of first you glance at this chart you are like maybe this is a chart of some uh, avatar of lord vishnu or somebody <laughs> And this person is born on the on Akshay Triti, as you can see, both sun and moon are exalted, which is this year on 10th May, I guess. And this is, um, this is an extraordinary chart. This is like <laughs> the Lord of the Ascension. Very cool. Very cool chart, Bobby G. <laughs> so Lord of the Ascendant is in the 11th house, like uh, the chart which you sh showed off Ma. And uh, Jupiter is exalted. It is in the Lagna. It's in Digbala. And Jupiter is also the sixth lord here. So sixth lord, when linked to the ascendant, can give a power to do a lot of penances, you know, tapasya, austerity. Do a lot of fasting and, you know, pujas and, you know, chanting and reading the scriptures. That them, Because sixth house is the tenth from the ninth house. That's a very good house for uh, doing, you know, brahmacharya and such stuff. And then we also have a uh, sun which is exalted. Now, why I'm speaking of sun here? Because uh, this person's family, family has been very spiritual. So sun is the lord of the second house, as you can see. It's the sign Leo there. So the second lord is in the 10th house. So this shows that one of the most primary karmas which this person will have is dealing with some of the matters of the family. So family matters is very important for this person because the second lord is in the 10th. And then you also have Mercury, the third lord, third lord in the 10th. So whenever 10th and third houses, these are linked and the person can uh, take up things like uh, giving knowledge to others as a carrier. And Saturn is also in own sign and it is also in Big Bala. So it's an extraordinary chart. <laughs> and there are three exalted planets in the Kendra and one planet is exalted in that is moon. And the ninth lord is also Jupiter. It is also in Lagna. So this person loves to just be with the gurus. You know, it's like that's the biggest uh, fascination for this person. Just I want to be with the gurus. <laughs> And nothing else this person wants. And this person is just helping others. And this person is just like a typical ascendant lord in the 11th. Like for Amitananda Mai Ma, we just saw. So these are great placements to have. And uh, one of the challenges is this uh, Venus and Mars and Ketu in the 12th house. So there were certain repercussions for this. But now the person is out from these challenges. So it's a very, very powerful chart. And uh, in my experience of meeting with this person uh, from like 2010 to 2015, I have been very closely associated with this person. I have seen, I mean, there is nothing this person cannot do. <laughs> Anything uh, which uh, like sometimes my, one of my gurus used to say, you know, <laughs> if nothing is getting done, then give it to this person. He will do it. <laughs> <laughs> so fantastic chart this is an extraordinary chart and very good two two Mahapurush yogas are there you know Hansa Mahapurush yoga is there then Shasha Mahapurush yoga is there very powerful chart this is and yeah that is all any comments you would like to give on this chart amazing chart Bhabhi Gigi what a person to know so um, the first a few things came to mind one is the relevancy of the yuga. See, because it's true, a chart like this in the Satya Yuga will have a many different manifestation because this chart manifesting in the Kali Yuga is limited. One, um, and not, not limited, this person will have an amazing life. But the, the, we, in the Kali Yuga, the Kshetra is the highest uh, uh, worship. So that's why uh, athletes are worshipped. That's why politicians are worshipped. That's why uh, celebrities are worshipped. But also, so, so, um, and so that's one thing that I wanted to mention is um, this person is a very spiritually evolved soul for many, many lifetimes. And they're probably doing amazing work in this life,
but they're also living in the wrong time. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't mean wrong time in terms of they don't carry benefit here. But all the gifts which this chart has to offer are not honored by the Kali Yuga. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That is that is very true. And again, I was showing uh, another principle, you know, that uh, here also you can see the fourth Lord, uh, which is one of the Lord of the Moksha houses is again Venus and in the 12th house. And it is again with the 10th Lord, you see Mars. So yeah, yeah. That, that, that also makes uh, spiritually very prominent as a matter of karma. Just, just not just, you know, giving lectures or something, just doing things himself also. So this is one very beautiful chart and I will pull out somebody else's chart also here. And, and the Mars was in Gemini, which while many of the other planets were exalted, that's not the best position for Mars. And again, Mars is the Kachaitra, the warrior. So, uh, and then um, I was also thinking that Ketu and Rahu are sometimes considered debilitated along the Gemini uh, Sagittarius axis. So, um, so the K2 could show um, some uh, K2 in the 12th house. Like you said, there was some problems with the ind which the individual dealt with. But in general, it can kind of show this like... Um, following my own spiritual path, uh, renounce, renunciating the material world. But then the person's also suddenly exalted in the 10th house, which I think would correct that. But, 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 but a duality between um, wanting to renounce this world, but also wanting to be successful within it. Yeah, that is perfectly seen in the life of this person. So how that has manifested here is that this person is inherently very detached. This person doesn't like to be famous on name and fame. This person is least interested in all this. But somehow because of his actions, you know, these planets like Sun and Mercury and Lagna Lord in the 11th. So even if this person doesn't want, you know, <laughs> a lot of name and fame comes to this person. Yeah. <laughs> and this happens especially in spiritual circles. And that's very uh, aptly you have mentioned. So that dwell, that dilemma is there. But uh, for him, it has worked out like this, that he himself doesn't crave after this, but somehow it comes to him. <laughs> That's the best approach. <clears throat> yeah, like even uh, for uh, the battle of Kurukshetra, if you see, you know, Arjuna never wanted uh, name and fame. Yudhishthi never wanted the kingdom. It was, uh, they never wanted to fight also. But uh, Krishna said that, uh, no, no, you will fight. And uh, Yudhishthi became the king. And in fact, Arjuna is also equally famous like Krishna because if you see the photo of Bhagavad Gita, you know, the book, you will uh, see that Krishna is sitting there in the chariot. So he's not very prominent there, but Arjuna is like, you know, he's taking the Gandhi when he's standing and he's the hero there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing with Moses in the Old Testament. God was like, Moses, I want you to follow, uh, lead my people. And Moses was like, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm not the person you want to do that. I'm just a shepherd. I just lead these lambs. I just lead these goats. And no, that's exactly why I want you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, so one more chart I'll show and then we can go to the other chart which you have, I guess. Yeah, so this is uh, another very powerful chart. And I have specifically kept this chart because there's a very powerful yoga in this chart. <laughs> I guess you have already identified. <laughs> well, Dharma Karmadipati Yoga is there because uh, the ninth Lord, which is Sun, and tenth Lord, which is Mercury, is conjunct together, and that too it is in the ninth house. So this is another very powerful yoga which I have seen working right and left, and there are other charts where also this yoga is present, which I will show eventually today. So. It's a very, 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 very powerful chart. And again, as I said, you know, Jupiter and Venus, these two planets shows uh, our communications with the gurus. So these two are also present uh, in the 10th house. And this is a fantastic placement to have. And uh, there are some issues, of course. <laughs> Venus is in debility, of course. And there are some other mantras which I have suggested this person to do. And uh, moon uh, is also in the fifth house, you know, fifth house is the house of mantra, as they say. So it's a very powerful chart. It's uh, this ninth lord, tenth lord yoga is there. And, you know, it's very powerful. 
the person loves to do spiritual activities loves to guide others and this is also another person who you know again you see that mars ketu and gemini <laughs> This is another person who uh, doesn't like uh, name, fame of that sort. But what to do? Uh, it comes. And here also the Lord of the Ascendant is in the 10th house. That is also another fantastic placement. So the point which I want to make here today with these three charts is uh, many times people have this misconception about spirituality that, or about religion also sometimes. I've seen people saying it like this that okay spirituality and religious stuff you know is for those people who couldn't do much good in their material life <laughs> so it's like a consolation prize for those people who failed in their material life i've i've heard many people saying like this because whenever i many people mail me that you know i have started reading the gita after seeing your videos etc but People are people tell me my family members, my relatives, my friends. They tell me that, oh, your material life is good. You know why are you becoming spiritual now? So, unless material life is bad, you should not become spiritual. So that's what I want to show in these charts that these are people who have had great material success. They are at the pinnacle of material success, and that is indicated in the chart. If you see the tenth house, you know, as you said in the last chart, sun exalted in the tenth house. So you don't have to be a, a pauper, you know, a beggar materially to become uh, spiritual. It's not required. That's a very big misconception. Because even if you are a beggar, maybe you may not want to be spiritual. If that would be the case, then every person who was, you know, in poverty would be spiritual. But we don't see like that. So spiritual progress has nothing to do with your finances or with your married life or anything to do with externals. Because some of these charts, they are married. Some of these charts, they are not married. So that's what I wanted to show. And uh, any comments on this chart? <laughs> I just love your philosophy, Dr. <laughs> Gigi. Um, I mean, the discussion about the material versus the spiritual is just so deep. Like, um, that's why they say rich man's heaven is the poor man's hell. But... <laughs> also that money doesn't buy happiness. Now, obviously having no money and having to struggle for food and shelter makes it hard to be happy. But if you have what you need, the question is, why would you need more? And if you have everything that you need, why would you need more? And then you get into more darker qualities such as greed, envy, uh, ego and we have to have a healthy ego but there's also an unhealthy ego so um so 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 there there arta is damarta kama mokshanam arta is one of the aims of life that it is within um our destiny to fulfill that that is our ability to provide for ourselves so we have to have everything that we need but again this, this, this desire to have more than we need, that's an infection that the world is suffering from. And, and I think when we get outside of this Kali Yuga, so in this chart, you have a person, strong energies in their career uh, and, and, and strong energies um, in their material influence. But then like you said, that particular yoga in the ninth house kind of leads them on a path of spiritual evolution. Very beneficial for this person to have a guru. Uh, and there's even potential for this person to become a guru. But that Mercury K2 in the seventh house is uh, difficult. This is saying for their spirit, K2 is the moksha karaka in the seventh house. So they could either have a very unique relationship in which their partner is helping them spiritually evolve in a really intense way, or they shall have no relationship at all. And the moon is in the fifth house. So there's desire, romance, attraction, <laughs> and all of these things. But it's really only the partner who's going to help you grow spiritually <clears throat> that's compatible here. So a lot of the um, support, um, it, it, it does support their chart for them to achieve, to have what they need. But then once they have what they, I, they need, I feel like not to be attached to the partner 
and to focus the life towards spiritual practices. Uh, that that's what I was feeling from this chart. Yeah, and if you see the nakshatras, you know the ascendant is in Mula nakshatra, you know, where uh, Saturn has been for very long, and now it has entered, you know, Purvashada. And now three planets are in Sagittarius and he has many planets, you know, in like Uttar Falguni, he has, you know, Sun, Mercury, Jupiter. So Uttar Falguni is about, you know, consulting and negotiations and making deals with others. So as you said, he has a potential to be a very good guru and definitely he is also indeed, you know, a very good guide and people keep approaching him not only for spiritual reasons, like. Uh, he's also here in Germany and one of my another friend, uh, he was calling this person that you know, <laughs> I'm having to get my driving license. You know, Can you help me? I'm facing this problem, that problem. So it's very good for this person to guide others.